Hello beautiful people, welcome to top 10 Bionicle mocks there ever was. Uh, this is specifically focusing on the best mocks of 2020, uh, because every year I like to do this, put together uh, my favourite mocks of the year, but I missed 2020 because it was a chaotic year, as I'm sure it was for everyone, uh, so I wanted to kind of step back and look back at 2020, and hey, it's always nice to take a look at some older stuff uh, and see you know, what we can uh, gleam from some of those pearls of the past. Uh, so always good to take a look back, isn't it? Uh, big thanks to Mitch Henry, he helped compile the list of mocks for this episode, so major props to him. Uh, but yeah, everything in this is uh, my opinion of what I think deserves uh, to be fitted in this little award ceremony of sorts. Uh, so hey, you might have different opinions on what were some of the best mocks of that year. Uh, so if that is uh, the case and you have some different thoughts, let me know what they are in the comments below. Uh, additionally, there will be a video much like this for the best mocks of 2022. So send me an email to the email that's on your screen right now. If you have a mock that you've made or a mock that a friend of yours might have made or just one you've seen online that you think makes the cut for the best mocks of 2022. We'll talk more about that in the future. Let's get stuck into the first few mocks, shall we? So here's my 10th favorite mock of the year in 2020. This is called Dragon, or I believe Red Dragon, by Mitch Phillips. I adore this. Seeing some of these awesome colors is just so striking and beautiful. The like azure leaves at the top of the head there combined with this beautiful striking red. Such a beautiful color scheme. And color, I think, plays such a big part in making fantastic marks. So I just adore that there. Uh, I love seeing the part spam on this mock here, repeating a bunch of those flipper pieces in red perfect for dragon scales and I think even better for the very kind of like Chinese dragon look here uh, with this big sort of spirally body uh, which has been perfectly executed here in Lego form uh, and you know Lego is a blocky thing it's hard to get sort of curvature and smoothness like that on a on a Lego creation so I think it's really commendable uh, how Mitch was able to to do that here he just absolutely nailed this mock and there's just so much to this that is so impressive and uh, definitely deserves a spot here on this list. Let's power through to number nine. This is by Jack the Mad, and this is Scottish Kelpie. What's so impressive about this mock is that they've perfectly captured the shape of this sort of horse-like creature here, but there's almost no gaps to be seen on this. And that's something that's very difficult with Bionicle. You can build something, but you're probably going to have a few gaps or some unsightly areas that don't look quite nice. But when you can just flawlessly transition between different parts of the body here and have this organic smooth flow all throughout it, it's just something special, and this mock has virtually no gaps to it. It's just brilliantly done. I mean, my favorite area here is the neck, repeating some of these Hero Factory leg pieces like that to get this slight curvature to form that neck. Gorgeous design, and the way that that transitions into the sort of front feet uh, and then into this sort of like torso area where there's actually a Hero Factory torso in white that the little curve of that perfectly matches up with that sort of... Um, shoulder joint piece there on the sort of start of that foot there. Man, those transitions are just so seamless and just some brilliant, brilliant shaping to this. So uh, this certainly deserves a spot on this list for that alone. I love the sort of mane, the sort of streak of hair that's sort of flowing in the breeze there. That's awesome. Uh, and the pose that this guy is in too. It, uh, it, I get the sense this is a fairly poseable mock. It's hard to say uh, from these images here, uh, but just the, the brilliant sort of statuesque pose that it's got here uh, is, is so cool. And I think photography plays such a big part uh, in uh, posting mocks and really conveying how awesome they are. I've seen countless mocks out there where uh, I've seen images of it and I go, that's that probably looks way better in person, but it hasn't been photographed well enough to convey that awesomeness. Uh, so very well photographed and very well posed to showcase just how impressive this mock is here. Uh, and a nice little stand to go with it too. So very, very impressive uh, technical work here. I adore this. Number eight is a mock by Redverse, and this is K9 Multipurpose Support Unit. Uh, this one was posted fairly early in 2020, and I remember seeing it at the time and immediately thinking that it deserves a spot on this list. Once again, the shaping on this and the very smooth organic textures to this are flawless. Once again, very few gaps on this. It's uh, it's just so nice to see. The kind of pose and position of this is so dog-like, and again, I think conveys a nice sense of the character here. Uh, the fact that he's sort of almost standing at attention and seems very sort of like rigid and uh, like soldier-like in nature. It certainly seems like uh, you would expect like a police dog or a dog that appears to be serving in some sort of sci-fi army here. Uh, that's how you would expect it to stand. So again, interesting to see how the photography and the posture here is playing 
playing a big role in conveying character. It's awesome. Uh, I love seeing the little toe design here, using some of these dot pieces. It's a great way to build sort of little dog paws of sorts. Uh, and all these different, like the, the sort of backpack and the other metal, uh, like armor and stuff like that. Very well placed and uh, a great way of kind of continuing across some of those smooth textures and things. It just looks so cool. Brilliant head design with the little dark brown nose as well. Just perfectly captures a sort of sci-fi battle dog of sorts. Uh, and it almost stops looking like Lego. It's just uh, really, really impressive. Just such a fun concept. Let's move over now to the number seven spot. This is by Joxon, uh, and this is the seven, and you know what? I'm not going to even try and butcher that name because I'm probably just going to get it wrong, but you can see it in front of you there. Uh, I adore this. I mean, Joxon is just the king of nice part usages, and everything he builds is so good, but I think this was my favorite here, uh, and the reason I say that is because he's packed so much character and so many fantastic techniques into such a small, limited space. Sometimes you can look at some master model builders and they build huge, impressive mocks and there's nothing wrong with them. They're beautiful to see. But I think the real challenge comes into packing detail into a small space because you're limited on space. There's only so much you can do. But if you're playing in a big area, you can put as many pieces in as you want, provided you have the pieces. Uh, so the fact that Joxon's able to put so much into a small space here is just so impressive. I mean, the face alone, the fact that he's used uh, what I believe are some flex tube elements to give the mock uh, like yellow eyes and sort of the black pupils there. The entire head design in itself, uh, we can see sort of the top here using one of the head pieces from this old, uh, I believe, Midgard serpent from one of the old Viking sets. Uh, the back of the head using some of those larger tooth pieces to form that sort of like almost triangular design, a very seamless, beautiful um, technique and design overall. Uh, some of these larger tail pieces in black here to form like the sides of the helmet. There's just so much going on. It's just so impressive. Uh, the club is also very cool. Uh, maybe that's not a club. I'm not sure of the name of that specific weapon there. Uh, but some of those triangular pieces, seeing the larger versions and the smaller versions there, it's just a fun way of doing it. Uh, and in general, just such a clever character design that's just so packed full of personality. It's uh, right up Jackson's alley, and it's easily one of his best marks, that's for sure. The number six spot now goes to my friend Wormy World, and this is Kurin. I adore the concept for this. I mean, we've already seen a few sort of horse-like creatures here today, uh, but I think it's really commendable to be able to replicate some of that beautiful natural shaping uh, and uh, perfectly replicating that horse-like structure into a bionicle mock. Because sometimes, you know, copying real-life anatomy and stuff like that is really difficult, but uh, Mr. Wormy World and Jack the Mad, like we saw before, they just nailed it. Uh, what I think is so impressive about this mock is we can see it in a variety of different poses. Uh, there's so much posability to this. It's not a sort of static model that doesn't move. Uh, and that in itself is its own unique challenge. Anyone can build a statue to a degree, but making it also posable and uh, you know, not really have any sort of like shaping issues or gaps and different things like that, that's really tough. Uh, and this mock here, I think, just nails that. I love the inclusion of some of these green like uh, snot grass pieces here uh, because they just look gorgeous. And, and seeing this this white and gold horse with these pops of, of like leaves and green and stuff like that, it's just really pretty to look at. I just love seeing plant pieces used in mocks like that. It always is just such a brilliant finishing touch. And the fact that it kind of looks like it's flowing in the breeze as he's running and stuff like that, that's so cool. Uh, the brilliant techniques of part spamming on the sort of like belly and kind of neck area here, just repeating these gold robot exoforce arm pieces here, makes for such a brilliant texture. Uh, and the way that he's created a bit of curvature on the torso using a bunch of these small white dish pieces, that also just looks phenomenal. Uh, so a lot of very, very impressive stuff going on on this mock. A lot of great techniques and awesome to see just how poseable it is. Well done, good sir. The number five spot now goes to Vlad Lesin, who built a mock called Talok. This is so cool. I mean, there's so many vibrant, beautiful colors to this. Such an imposing, impressive looking figure. Uh, and so many nice part usages. I mean, the headdress alone using one of the gold Zamosphere launcher pieces there uh, in conjunction with a bunch of different tail elements and Exoforce robot arm pieces uh, and plant pieces and all sorts of craziness just looks so perfect. Using the little T-Rex arms as sort of like eyebrows of sorts uh, in sand blue there combined with those dinosaur head pieces to form uh, sort of uh, you know part of the eye there as well. 
such a detailed, beautiful headpiece, which is just so crazy to see. There's just so much detail in this and uh, just such a vibrant, beautiful mock. I love too the use of some of the barracks pieces, whether that's his sword or his helmet uh, being used as sort of like flowing water coming out of this pot here. I love the sense of motion that that creates. It's just such a clever technique. Uh, and even just sort of the clouds around his belly there, because I believe this is the, uh, it's a depiction of the Aztec god of rain and thunder. Uh, it's a very fitting way of kind of conveying that god-like presence to this character by putting uh, like storm clouds and things around his belly there to imply that he's probably very big and that he lives up in the heavens and stuff like that. Really, really cool. Um, so yeah, just a, a brilliant way of recreating uh, an interpretation of this character here with so many clever techniques and just such a striking, vibrant mock over overall so so cool the number four spot goes to torrent axe 97 and this is garzal king of the beasts i adore just the overall face design on this character here the the beard especially uh, repeating so many of those larger brown claw pieces here uh, with a couple other different pieces as well that beard is just so impressive again there's no gaps to it I mean, all of it, I imagine, is connected uh, behind. And you know, maybe if you were to tip the mock around, you'd be able to sort of see how that's done. But I just can't wrap my head around how he's connected all of those. It's so seamless. It's so impressive. The overall face design, too, is just so cool, like using some cut flex tube to form an eye design very similar to Joxon's mock with the sort of you know blue outline and the pupils in the middle there. So cool. I love his little teeth poking out there as well. It's a little bit cute and a little bit cool. Uh, and the tail design, I adore this as well, using some of those stud shooter pieces to give the tail this uh, slightly thicker but um, more unique sort of curvature to it. Uh, and then including uh, the little like kind of snake head on the back there using a uh, dragon head piece from Lloyd's Dragon uh, from the Ninjago Lego movie. Uh, very nice little uh, inclusion there. And I don't know, just something about this mock is just so well put together, the shaping on it, the overall look to it. Uh, and just some incredibly clever techniques going on. It's uh, it's a sight to behold. I really do enjoy this one. For the number three spot, we have Jafer, uh, and he has built a mock called John Silver, you might, of course, know from Disney's uh, Treasure Planet. Uh, so first off, instantly recognizable, which is always, uh, you know, something very impressive when you build a mock and people instantly know what it is that you're doing. But some of the best details on this, I think, are the, the belly design, using some of these balloon pieces in white uh, to form this uh, sort of, you know, chubbier, stockier look here. That's such a clever part use. And I think the way that he's integrated it into the rest of the build, like using some of these cloth elements to form uh, the sort of like, you know, uh, jacket thing that he's wearing here. I imagine that jacket covers up uh, a good amount of the sort of inner structure that holds those balloon pieces into place, but you wouldn't be able to tell. It's such a seamless transition between you know, uh, the, the shirt that he's wearing and the jacket that he's got. Uh, so that's really clever, not only just from like a looks perspective, but from a sort of like structural perspective, because you can cover up all the bits that you don't need to see, uh, but you can still get that beautiful looking design which again kind of transcends the the lego uh elements that we're building with here uh because it just doesn't look lego there's such a brilliant curvature to it it just starts to become like a cartoon character it stops looking like bionicle it's such a clever design um so yeah just so packed full of character and a brilliant recreation of the original source material here with some absolutely insane part usages i definitely think this deserves a number three spot but now let us transition to the number two spot this is by vb and this is the anito i would say this is the best bionicle focused landscape i've ever seen uh, i've seen a, a few different designs of it uh, you know across my time i'm doing the bionicle inspiration series and yeah you can use system pieces to build landscape very nicely i mean there's countless examples of how good that can look but if you want to just purely use Bionicle pieces to do that, it's really limiting. It's not easy. Bionicle pieces were designed to make characters, not landscape. But man, it works flawlessly here. And yes, there's a good amount of system integrated into this, but there's also not. We can see uh, one of these Midgard serpent head pieces that we saw before. You could argue that system, but it's got a lot more sort of technic connections to it. So I'd argue it's a bit closer to Bionicle in that regard. Uh, we can see some of these tail pieces here uh, that came on the horns on um, Umarak the Hunter, uh, and that just looks awesome as sort of like reeds of sorts. And then, yeah, integrating it with a few other sort of system pieces here and there, but there also appears to be some um, Technic lift arms and some Hero Factory pieces and stuff like that there. Uh, so a great way of integrating a little bit of system and a little bit of Bionicle to form just some gorgeous looking landscape. 
These uh, head designs are also fantastic. I love the way that he's used some of these wheel pieces that came on some like power miners sets and a few different things. Uh, these pieces, of course, are in dark bluish gray instead, but it forms such a, a brilliant little mouth design there and does look like little teeth of sorts. Uh, yeah, just in general, those two head designs look so, so good. But my favorite thing here is the, the this little dude on top here. Uh, I love the way that his hair has been done as if it's sort of blowing in the breeze. There's this almost sort of like Art Nouveau quality to it with those beautiful smooth curved lines there. It's so cool. Uh, and then I love those striking eyes, just pure white there that pops so nicely against that pure black color scheme on the mock there. So, so cool. Um, yeah, just a brilliant sense of character and storytelling behind this uh, and just some phenomenal techniques all throughout. It definitely deserves a number two spot. But what's the number one spot? Good question. Let's quickly move over to some honorable mentions first. So I'm going to power through these. we got five of them. The first one is by Patrick Biggs, and this is Pain and Gain. I adore this. There's just such a fun sense of character behind these guys here. Just pumping those wheel weights there. That's so cool. I love some of the part usages, like the, the teeth that they have and the beautiful contrast between the two of them. They both seem very similar, but they're very different color schemes and sort of different styles uh, of, uh, of characters there. It's so, so cool. And great to see some misprinted trans blue uh, or trans neon or trans light blue, whatever the name of the color is, uh, and Tros wings in the back there. I wish I had some. That's the real flex on this mock here. Uh, but overall, such fun character design. Uh, this is a mock by Leonid Ahn, and this is Masamun the Silent Wanderer. Uh, the face design on this is awesome, using Core Hunter's mask and combining it with one of the Chima Ultra Build headpieces here. Brilliant combination. The hair design on this, the beautiful color scheme, and the seamless, fantastic uh, sort of textures all throughout this here make for an absolutely awesome mock. Really, really like this one. Let's move over to the next honorable mention. This is by Yannick Gotz, and this is Boltungen. I love the hyena-like qualities to this character here, using one of these teardrop lift arms to form the ear on this guy, uh, and using some of these palm tree pieces in dark tan to form the sort of like fur that you would kind of typically see on a, a hyena or a sort of wolf-like character of sorts. Uh, also, just a lot of the, the overall textures on this are a little bit more rough, specifically with some of these Borok arm pieces being used uh, up on uh, sort of the top of the torso here. And to me, that kind of conveys this sort of more hairy texture, which would seem fitting for this sort of style of creature. Uh, so it's nice to see some different types of textures. We've seen a lot of very smooth ones so far. So really nice to see some more sort of like furry hair textures being uh, very well built here. So a fantastic mock by Yanni. Uh, on to the next one. This is by Sergei Rakamanov, and this is Art Nouveau Candelabra. Uh, I love the concept of this, like a sort of candle character of sorts, and that they're actually sort of holding up these very well built candles with those flame pieces, just sort of slightly not attached so that they're kind of blowing in the breeze there. Such a nice design and just such a nice concept. I love seeing it almost like an art piece built out of Bionicle here. It's uh, really impressive. Uh, so great to see all these Art Nouveau style lines, which is sort of very typical of your Art Nouveau art style, uh, with a lot of those silver um, tentacle claw pieces being used. And the way that that blade piece has been used in the sort of like dress there um, is, a, is, is nice. It kind of looks a bit like a candle, kind of looks a bit like a dress or other just sort of fanciful little details there. It's just a really nice addition and overall such a pretty looking mock. Really, really cool. The final honorable mention for 2020 is Alex Merton's mock. Unarak, which is obviously based off one of the original Visorak sets. I love how different this looks to the original set. Such a unique, different take on the character. And again, such beautiful, smooth textures. It's just always nice to see on a Bionicle mock those smooth, cool textures. Uh, and I love this head design too with uh, the four eyes instead. There's something a little bit more spider-like with this, which seems very fitting. Uh, so just overall so beautiful. I love how those slicer head pieces have been used in yellow, in black, all throughout this mock here to really convey a sense of smoothness to this. It's sleek and it's pretty. It's really cool. But what's the number one mock, my favorite mock of 2020? Well, it's a mock by Tino Pautinen, and this is... Mikante Kluti, I think I'm saying that wrong, but I tried my best. So, I adore this so much. I love the sense of scale with this, using the little trophy minifigure down here to look like a typical human. And then here's this huge, terrifying god standing over the top of this ancient temple here. 
so cool to see a sense of scale like this. Uh, I love the vibrant colors all throughout this mock, the striking red, the beautiful azure and stuff like that. So cool. The teeth design, the striking white eyes, the beautiful necklace and the sort of uh, like skirt and thing that he's got there. So, so cool. I mean, using some of those cloth pieces uh, and these different dishes and stuff to form all the intricate like, you know, attire that he's got on here. The way that he's sort of sitting as well, like he's sort of judging someone or is about to like strike someone down. I don't know, just everything about this is working so well. The nice part usages, the great techniques, the posture, the posing, the photography, the colors. It's got everything going for it and it just works so well. This monk just ticks all the boxes. It's just so cool. Plus, it just looks nice. It's just a visually striking, cool art piece. It's just so cool. I don't know. I can't talk enough about this monk, but we're already at 20 minutes with this episode, so I'm unfortunately going to have to stop. Uh, but it's just so awesome, and I know other people share that because I've had a few conversations about this monk with a few different people. It's fantastic. So like I said, stay tuned for the best mocks of 2022 coming out very, very soon. Uh, and if you have suggestions for mocks that you think were the best mocks of 2022, email them to me with the submission email that you're currently seeing on your screen and try to put in the subject of the email or somewhere in the email 2022 top 10 video something like that just so it's a bit easier for me to pick it out thanks for taking a trip down memory lane and looking back at some of the best mocks of 2020 with me thanks for watching happy building and bye for now